Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Addicted to Gear. My name is Tony, thank you for joining me here today. So in one of my last videos, and I'll post the link up above, uh, I basically outlined three of the top guitars in my collection. And, uh, you know, I put a caveat in that video saying that, uh, you know, I, I didn't necessarily specify which one is my number one, but I wanted to just give you guys an idea of which of the guitars in my collection I like the most. And I sort of narrowed it down to the top three. So that video went over pretty well. I got a lot of positive feedback and a lot of you had asked me to continue to show you the guitars in my collection. So in no particular order this time, I thought it would be nice to show you the next guitars. And I'll limit it to three per um, episode like this because otherwise it's going to get long and boring. I know you guys don't have the attention span that you used to have. Uh, neither do I, by the way. So, you know, we'll limit it to three guitars and I'll show you them and I'll explain to you why I like them and maybe why I bought them. Uh, or on the other hand, maybe why I don't like them anymore and I'm considering getting rid of them because those are two possibilities that happen all the time. So let me just grab another guitar and we'll talk about it. Now, some of you might recall this guitar that I reviewed. I'll put the link above where I did the full review on the guitar. This is a Harley Benton guitar. It's a fusion guitar. They call it the Fusion Pro Series. And um, why did I like this guitar? Well, first of all, you can't beat the features on this guitar. It really is a lot of a guitar for not too much money. And uh, that was one of the prime reasons why I was attracted to it. Now, the color of this guitar is not necessarily my favorite color. I would probably not have selected this color uh, if I had a choice at the time of other colors, but it's grown on me and I kind of like it. It has a little bit of sparkle in it as well. And um, overall, I think what Harley Benton was trying to do with this guitar at the time was to kind of give you a guitar that is kind of like what you're getting with the Ibanez guitars, uh, the Charvel guitars, and the Sur guitars, specifically one model, uh, which is the Pete Thorne model, because this guitar looks an awful lot like that guitar. Uh, of course, you're not paying $5,000 for this guitar like you would be paying for the Sir. This one is very, very affordable, but it does have a lot of the same features. I mean, it has two humbuckers. It has uh, a switch for splitting the coils on the humbucker, which I never really use. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of that feature, but it's there for those of you who like it. There's a really nice Wilkinson tremolo, which, you know, feels really nice. Uh, but what I really like about this guitar is the fact that it comes with stainless steel frets, a really nice fretboard, locking tuners, graph tech nuts. So basically all of the features you would get on a high end guitar for way less money. Even the heel is contoured. So that is one of the reasons why I really wanted this guitar. I wanted to try it out. Of course, I've upgraded the pickups. Needless to say, I shouldn't even mention that anymore because you guys make fun of me every time I say that. But uh, if you guys want to do a, a, you know, a drinking game every time I mention the fact that I uh, change the pickups, go right ahead. But overall, great guitar. Uh, and, you know, other than the pickup upgrade, uh, which is, you know, not necessarily required. The stock Roswell pickups are okay, um, in my opinion, but I always like to experiment. So, and I'm a big sucker for the raw nickel covers. So I like to put those in my guitars and that's exactly what I did. And this guitar plays extremely well. I have no complaints about it and it's been in the collection ever since. All right, so the next guitar is quite unique. Uh, if you guys have been around in the 80s, you'll recognize this guitar right off the bat. Has a lot of very uh, familiar features. This is a Kramer Beretta Special that I couldn't resist buying because I'm a big sucker for anything related to Eddie Van Halen. I'm a big Van Halen fan and I've been meaning to get a Beretta forever. I never actually grabbed one in the past, but when they came out with these Beretta specials, which I'll also put the review for you up 
above. Um, I had to grab it because the prices on these guitars are so cheap that it's a sin not to grab one or two. So I grabbed this one used and uh, it was set up perfectly. The gentleman uh, really did a great job or whoever his, his guitar tech was did a great job on the guitar, played extremely well was immaculate and he even upgraded the pickup for me <laughs> so if that's not a sign from heaven i don't know what is um, and he put in a jb seymour duncan which i think is a great match for this guitar has a lot of oomph to it and sounds really nice and i love the black just the black finish with the rosewood neck I'm a big fan of rosewood, as I've mentioned many times before. And I feel like the black paint job on this guitar, you know, make it a lot more subdued. And it doesn't necessarily scream Eddie, but you know, if you're an Eddie fan, you know, you'll know where it comes from. You know, the roots are there, right? Uh, I changed the knob on the volume, the single volume knob, and I put an MXR knob on it, just like Eddie had, so that a little, you know, tip of the hat to Eddie. And one of the main upgrades that I made on this, on this guitar myself was I decided to drop in a Vega trim because it didn't come with a Floyd. It was actually a very cheap, tremolo and i think that is the weak point of this guitar when you're buying it stock it's the tremolo um so i ended up getting a vega trem i didn't want to go with a floyd because then i would have to do some additional routing i would have to drill holes and risk messing up the paint job and whatnot and i i'm not a huge fan of floyd rose uh, tremolo systems now because not that they don't work well they do work extremely well i just don't like the hassle and i feel like you know a good quality tremolo even though it's not necessarily locking will do the job and this one allows me to do dive bombs as well as pull-ups the tremolo on this guitar is extremely well crafted super high quality it's not inexpensive but it was well worth it for me because it really brought this guitar up to the next level maybe even two or three levels up from what it was um, so definitely a great buy and a great guitar that i really love i would go as far as to say that i have considered and i am still considering buying another one of these with a maple fretboard and the reason for that is maybe just for you know just for giggles i might actually give it the old evh stripe paint job as a little homage to eddie and keep that in my collection just for fun uh, because i've always wanted to do that and I never got around to it, but if I can grab one of these while they're still on the market uh, and at a relatively inexpensive price, that might just be a project for a later date. So that's the Kramer Beretta Special in my collection. Now I know we talked about a Les Paul style guitar in my other video and there's a few of these floating around, so you'll see a couple of them in these series. This one, may or may not be familiar to you. I actually did a full video review on this specific guitar. And then once again, this is not a Gibson. This is a Bacchus Les Paul style guitar that I grabbed, used again. And I wasn't intending on buying this guitar. I came across it on the used market. And the first thing that grabbed my attention was this beautiful body. Just look at that, you know? Uh, you know, flame always gets me. I don't know what it is, but this top has really nice flame on it. And, you know, it's not an expensive guitar. It looks great, but it's not extremely expensive. But it's well built in all the areas that count. And I'll put the link above where you can find the full video review on this guitar. But I'm actually uh, very impressed by these Bacchus guitars, which I believe are made in China. Now there's uh, other ones that are a little bit more expensive, a little bit more sought after, but I wasn't aiming to buy this guitar specifically. It just caught my attention. Uh, it, you know, 
came across my radar, the price was good, it looked really nice, and I decided to grab it. Now, this guitar has all the features and functionalities that I love about Gibson guitars, and there's something very special about this guitar that I don't have on my other Gibson style guitars, which actually convinced me to buy it, and it's actually the slim neck. This neck is extremely slim, back to front, more than any other of my Gibson guitars. This one is very, very slim. I would probably guess that it's sort of similar to what Jimmy Page uh, plays because, you know, he his guitar, his number one Les Paul, had a shaved down neck. So it was a lot thinner back to front than most other Gibsons, which tended to be pretty bulky at that time. And this one definitely is not. So it's really easy to play, really, really comfortable. Uh, the nut was upgraded to a bone nut. The original nut was not bone. I did that, but everything else is stock except for the pickups. So grab a shot, you guys. These pickups have been upgraded. I mentioned that in my full video review, so check that out. So when you buy a guitar that's affordable, but it has well-made components and it works together, with the tuners and the bridge and the saddle and whatnot, it's worth it, worth every penny. The only thing that I found with this guitar is that because the neck is a little bit thinner than normal, it's a little bit more sensitive to climate change, to you know changes in humidity levels and whatnot, so you kind of have to deal with that a little bit more. But other than that, it plays like butter and it feels great, and it's definitely a keeper, you know, in my opinion. I think it's just a real looker. So that's basically it for today, guys. I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's three for three. So those are the next three guitars in my collection. If you like these type of videos and you like me talking about and going through my collection, just give me a thumbs up. Mention that in the comments below and I'll follow up this video with another three of my guitars from my collection so we can talk about them and go over the gear together. If you guys like it, then I like it too. I'm a guitar geek just like you, so you're in the right place. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Addicted to Gear. My name is Tony. If you guys want to be notified whenever I post a video like this, hit the little bell icon and don't forget to subscribe. Otherwise, you're going to miss the boat, guys. That's it for now, guys. So stay tuned. Keep rocking. More great stuff coming your way right here on Addicted to Gear. See you soon.